And Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Those of you who wasn't here last week, this is actually part two. I'll prove it. I'll prove it. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Very familiar passage. Once you find it, if you would stand with me and honor the word of the Lord. And let's see why Paul was talking the way he was. Often quoted, often referred to, and rightfully so. And I believe that our lesson today, we will see even more the need to do so. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Father, my mindset is to prove it to the world, to show forth the praises of him that have brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Father, I thank you that you give those who are willing an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to react. I thank you that you don't just make us to feel something in church, but you give us wisdom and understanding by way of your word so that we might be able to know the times in which we live. Lord, I thank you that what was said then is just as much important now and I pray for the next few moments. No one here would not see it. I pray that you would open our ears and eyes, give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to react, that we need to make such a presentation, holy and acceptable unto you, which is the right thing to do. And to not want to be like the world, but allow the transforming power of God to make us ever the more like Jesus. I thank you. For those who are willing, for those who avail themselves, you will do that mighty work in them. And the things they used to do, they won't do no more. And the way they used to talk, they won't talk it no more. I thank you that you are changing hearts, touching lives, and for all who avail themselves to you, you'll do it. And they'll prove it. Somebody say, I'll prove it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please be seated. The need, the need is so dire that Paul used a word like beseech. In many texts, they use a word that is so, 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 so demanding and so, uh, so forceful. He's begging of them to do this. He's begging them to do so. The world copies everything. The world copies everything. But it seems those on the other side sometimes show a devotion many New Testament believers fail to show. The book of Romans really walks through a, 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 a charted line where both the Jew and the Gentile are brought to faith, saving faith. And Paul starts the journey helping us to understand that the election, the calling, the justification of believing Gentiles and Jews are being admitted into the kingdom by faith. Somebody say by faith. by faith. They have a clear understanding of all these he has proved from Romans that it is set on the same footing as our father Abraham who is the father of faith. And it gives us privileges. We have privileges of being who we are. We have a great blessing that's bestowed upon us because of that. We can glory by virtue in the covenant that God has made. Paul still goes a little higher and helps us to show us that being a gift, grace, unmerited favor, to have something you did not deserve, Amen. to have something you did not earn, comes by way of Jesus. 
He fully explains in the book of Romans, both with regard to the Gentiles and the Jew. And this is so important. He serves both notice that the nature of the sacrifice is recorded. Look at, is required. Look at verse one. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, as much as we know we are granted this mercy, there's something we need to do. This address is probably intended both for Jews and Gentiles. That you make this presentation and the mercy proves that you ought to do so because God has spared us. You know, God didn't just save you to save you. He saved you with a purpose. Now you got to show something to the world. You got to prove something. And it's his tender mercies. The writer said morning by morning, it's their noon. Mercy is a good thing. My father-in-law used to always say, you know, thank God for his mercy. Elder Roberts, he loved to talk about the mercy of God. I guess because uh, when you know you come from so far back in the line, and by God's mercy, he moved you up in the line, put you up in, you know, my saying, favor ain't fair, but it sure is good. And I thank God for his mercy in doing so because his goodness and mercy follows us. Every day of my life. And it's because of that mercy, by his tender mercies and compassions, just like a father would show his children, a mother would show your children. How many of you as parents have had mercy on your children when judgment could have came down? You extended mercy. Sometimes even on our jobs, when we have the legal right to enact, we show mercy. I believe those who show mercy are those who have received mercy. And sometimes because we know how merciful God is with us, we are willing to be merciful with others. And people are always saying, man, how you put up with that? Why you putting up with that? Why don't you go ahead and deal with that, deal with it? Sometimes we're thinking, Lord, I know what I put you through. And because your mercy is extended to me, I can show some mercy to you. Amen. Please don't be so high-minded and so safe that you can't show some mercy to someone else. Look what Paul said. Now, I beseech you by the mercies of God. You know God had mercy with you. Now, the writer said it, and it's true. If the Lord had regarded iniquity, who could stand? Nobody. I don't care how pretty you are. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how much your walk is right now. And I believe some of you have a walk with God that is sincere and genuine. If the Lord had regarded iniquity that's in our heart, none of us could stand. So we know it's mercy that's got us here. <laughs> you didn't do no It's mercy that got you here. He said, I want you, in light of that mercy, I want you to be able to show mercy too. But because you received that mercy, I want you to make this presentation. Now, children of Israel, the Israelites, to a Jew, they knew what sacrifice was, but also to a Gentile too. A living sacrifice as opposed to a dead sacrifice. Jews would offer clean sacrifices. Gentiles, whatever I give you, you get. <coughs> Now the table is turned. I want to show you something. We're going to take a, 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 a twist, but ride with me, okay? okay? He said, I want you to do this because it is necessary. Why is it so necessary? Well, look at the world we live in. We need some people that are sold out to God, that have made that sacrifice so that God can use. Because when you put an offering on the altar of sacrifice, God consumes it and uses it. Watch this. He said, I want you to give this sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God because when you put it in God's hands, a little means much when you place it in. Why is Paul going to this extent? I beseech you, I beg of you to do this. And then make it acceptable. Which brings the question, not everything that's being offered Perhaps it's being accepted. That's a, that's, I, I understand. God wants a pure sacrifice. 
in Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 4. He said, you shall not walk after, uh, ye shall walk after the Lord your God, Deuteronomy 13 and 4, and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. This is not maybe. He said, you shall. This is what I want you to do. You shall walk. The word walk in the Hebrew construction many a times talks about lifestyle. This is a pattern by which I want you to live. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you, ye shall serve him. And this is the point. We have to serve someone. And no one can serve two masters. Then he used a word that is very, 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 very inclusive here. He said, cleave unto him. The same word is used when a man is told, told to cleave to his wife and they become one flesh. That much unity is called between you and God. And when you cleave in that sense, nothing else can get in the way because you cleave so tight. Nothing can get in the middle. Children of Israel, when they get in trouble with God, the only way they could get right and get back was to put away the strange gods and make a pure sacrifice. In 1 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 3, Samuel told me, spake unto all the house of Israel and said, If you do return unto the Lord with all your heart, watch this, all your heart, then put away the strange gods. Ask you from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. Then he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Now, those of you who know your Bible know that they didn't just serve these gods. They offered sacrifices unto these gods. The reason being so is because they culturally got caught up with the people that were serving these gods. And if you know your Bible, when they went in to possess, the Lord told them, don't do this. He said, I don't want you to get involved with that. I don't want you to fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. He told them, you serve me and me only. They expressed concern for the living sacrifices understood in many circles, especially in those of false worship because they mimic true worship. And what do they do? They, they flip their cross upside down, but they still got a cross. Mm. They take their Bible and they rewrite it. But they got a Bible. They have an altar, but it don't look nothing like this. And while you don't even want to look at it on YouTube, it's very real in the reality in a world in which we live just like it was back then. Demonic worship requires sacrifice and drinking of blood eating of flesh of those sacrificed animals. Hear me. Temple priests who desire to be uh, have greater influence in the spirit participate in such practices, and the stronger the power one demonstrates, the more respected they become. The more respected the priest is on. In Deuteronomy 18 and 10, watch this, talking about ungodly sacrifice and how we must stay away from it and how much we must guard from it. And I'm going to go back and show you why it's so important that we need to make this presentation to God so that we can give God something to work with. In Deuteronomy 18 and 10, the Bible said, And there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his sons or his daughter to pass through the fire. More like worship. Or that use of divination or an observer of time or an enchanter or a witch. What? Or a charmer. Look at verse 11. Or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a no ne necromancer. I guess I said that right. <laughs> For all that do these things are an abomination under the Lord. Y'all remember when Saul got in trouble? And he went and disguised himself and consulted a witch. <coughs> Major violation. <coughs> For all that do these things are abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God do have drive them out from before you. 
Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and diviners, but as for thee, the Lord thy God have not suffered thee so to do. He's saying, look, I'm getting ready to get you in this land. You're going to possess this land. This is what those people did, but you can't do it. Just look at somebody tell them you can't do it. You can't do what other people do. You've been brought with a price. Therefore, you got to glorify God in your body, which is God's. You must understand, y'all, the demonic influence is seeking to expand its platform. The demonic influence is just as visible as it's ever been, and it's on the rise. It's on the rise. I want to show you something. You must understand that demonic influence is seeking to expand their platform and what is happening in our nation. What is happening in our nation that we visibly see has a greater ramification than what we can't see even though what we visibly see is damaging. The agenda that is worse is what we can't see. They won't show that on the news, but what they do show is that migrants are coming to America. Mm -hmm. They're coming from everywhere. They're coming from Africa. They're coming from China. Mm -hmm. By way of our border, Military age men are coming from third world countries, some we are at war with. And they're saying some of them have actually got in that was on the watch terror list. On top of that, well, you do not know that migrants come in are being given prepaid debit cards. Debit cards, in certain cases, uh, food assistance, dwarf the amounts provided to legal families. What I mean by that is a family that is a legal born citizen here in America get less than what they're getting when they come in. Mm -hmm. I give you an example, and this is this is factual here. Uh, 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 a family that is a regular legal family of four will get seven hundred and thirteen dollars a month, but a migrant family receives fourteen hundred. Mm -hmm. The total is higher than military veterans disability compensation. A veteran who has fifty percent disability and a spouse and one child receive $1,255.16 every four weeks, according to the Department of Veteran Affairs. Housing vouchers are being given, and what is happening even in this town in Ohio is that they're giving them housing vouchers to go get a house where the government will supplementally pay their rent and pay higher amount than the amount that people are paying in regular homes. So what landlords are doing is terminating people lease and now renting to migrants because they're getting more money by way of the government. And in Ohio, you can go and look this up. People are coming up homeless because the influx of Haitians has taken over this little town. This little town of 65,000 people has now 15,000 immigrants from Haiti. What you do not know is that the competency rate in Haiti for the average person there is at 70%. That's below the average, which is 75. This is just competency at a third grade level. The competency level of a person in Haiti is at 70%, when the average on a third grade level is 75 here in America. Now, these folks not only are not educated or at the competency level, but they come from an area steeped in tradition. I mean, y'all know that. Steeped in the tradition, but what kind of tradition? Haiti was sold out to the devil many years ago. The leader of the country dedicated the place to Satan. Witchcraft is on the rise. It's practiced from generation to generation. I just saw a YouTube video yesterday as I was preparing some of this of a woman who is a seventh generation. Seventh generation. Her mother's 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 mother, mother taught and passed it down to her. Priestess of a sin practicing witchcraft. They tell me there's not one person born in Haiti that's not connected in some way to a family that pr practices witchcraft. Steeped in voodoo, they came to Ohio, 15,000. Some of them were flown in unaware and just took over. Now, you cannot think, and I'm not saying everybody there is a witch, 
But you cannot think with 15,000 people, there's not somebody involved in wicked practices. Watch this. In order to rise in voodoo, in order to rise as a priest or a priestess in a culture, in a village in Haiti, one must possess more power than the challenging power, so they are constantly in a race to receive more power from the demonic forces. In order to do so, they practice rituals. They practice satanic worship at levels and heights that will make some of you throw up. But here's what they're doing. They are steeped in their voodoo. And everyone know that the practice of this practice is widespread. And in order to rise in the practice of witchcraft, you must engage in sacrifices that make people cringe, like sleeping with a dead corpse, drinking the blood, and offering animal sacrifices, then eating the animal that you sacrificed, which is what took place in Ohio. The people wasn't hungry. They get food stamps. They get plenty of food stamps. But there is a witch that wants that territory. There is a demonic force that wants to be in charge of the spirit realm in the demonic spirit realm. So they, just like they do in Haiti, are offering up animals. And in order to get the higher rank, you have to eat the same animal you offered. That's why people, cats and dogs, are coming up missing. And while Donald Trump with his dumb self said it, he didn't understand the spiritual ramifications behind it. And they took it and twisted it like people are eating damn dogs and cats. They ain't got to eat no dog and cat. They got plenty of food stamps. The people are eating it are eating it with a purpose. Let me tell you what's on the rise here. Not just here in America, but everywhere. And it ain't just happened with people coming from Haiti. I wish I could show you. I got it in that, that storage we got. I got a videotape I had a long time ago of demonic worship, how music plays a part of it, and how people who want to rise in demonic worship must engage in such activities in order to get high-ranking power. And don't you dare think there are people who are seeking high-ranking power in demonic worship. So even though he didn't fully understand, he was right. There are people eating cats and dogs. And it's not just in Ohio, y'all. It's wherever these demonic forces are influencing the mind of people. I got, I got a videotape that's in our storage when we put all this stuff out of the church in storage. I got a videotape that justifies this way before this has ever happened. It shows what a real abortion or more like worship looks like and make you throw up the average person but they talked about how people who wanted to have power in the spirit realm had to do certain things in new orleans one of the biggest threats right now and this is a place steeped in witchcraft steeped in voodoo witchcraft this day the biggest problem they have is people breaking in graves not to steal a grave but to get in the corpse and spend the night so that they can get power I'm not talking about what I heard. This is a reality. And go check it on YouTube and you'll find it. Drinking the blood of the animal they sacrifice. And then turn around and eat that animal. And those who want the higher rank, eat the animal without cooking it. i never forget when I was dating Tawanza. I was down in Ormond Beach. Trying to get to her. I forgot where I was going. Some road. It was Halloween night. Because I'm a preacher and I study this stuff. Demonic activity at all time high. We're coming into the fall season. This is the wicker season. This is the spirit of the witch. They have festivals and all that. Look it up. Now they're at the all time high. There was a man. And I, I, I knew what this was when I saw it. I was coming down a street there in Holly Hill. And a man on October the 31st was laid out in the street. He was laying in the street for a car, could run him over. He was getting ranked in his demonic activity, folks. I knew what was going on. I began to pray. If you remember in the book of Acts, Simon had a whole city bewitched. 
Folks, these people are not just coming. They're coming and they're wanting to exercise their power. Why do you think we have people sitting in seats of government who are non-American? They're not worshipers of the Lord. Do you think they're going to push that agenda? When we say one nation under God, they keep quiet. They don't say nothing. They don't put their hand over their heart. So now we have somebody like Paul saying, look, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Why? Folks, we're going to need God's mercy in some while, and you're going to need some power. And the only way you're going to get it is you've got to give yourself over to God as a sacrifice and say, Lord, take me and use me for your glory. Use me to deal with this stuff. Use me to be a force in this day in which I live because it's on the rise. We're being in flux with all kinds of spirits and demonic activity. And because now that little town in Ohio has been flooded with 15,000 Haitians, there are some over there fighting for demonic power and they're eating cats and dogs to get it. That's why they eat them. They ain't hungry. They're getting $1,500, $1,400 a month. That's crab leg stuff there, y'all. That's shrimp stuff there, boy. They, they eating good every month. Come on. That's a crab ball on the first. They ain't hungry. But the people who want the demonic activity, they want to be the high priestess. Folks, there was a man in Haiti who is the priest of this town. This man gets up and go through a ritual that would make some of you just puke just to maintain the power. And he took and put himself in the spirit of this body. And he caused this man to admit that he was demonic in it. His son was uncontrollable like a lunatic. And he, he said it was the father's fault because the father wouldn't give an offering to the spirits. I mean, this stuff ain't made up, y'all. It's practiced. And it's not just practice in Haiti. There's a town here in South Florida here. A whole city given over to it. A whole city given over to it. New Orleans is given over to it. No wonder Paul is begging for people to give themselves over to God and allow his purpose to be filled in their life. This is why it's so important. And look what he said in verse 2 in Romans 12. And be not conformed to this world. This world has an agenda. They don't want it to be godly neither. This world is ever evolving. This world, as sad as it is, is going to hell in a basket. Paul said, look, I don't want you to be like this world. But you have to go through transformation. I love you. This is not a popular message, I know. Not many churches even talk about this kind of stuff today, yesterday, or will tomorrow. Because they don't generate big crowds. They don't raise offerings. Mm -hmm. I was at a church this morning. I'm looking at the bulletin. Last week, they raised $68,000. I thought, wow, that's crazy. $68,000. But I sat there and didn't hear a message, though. I didn't hear a message. My heart broke. And the one young man who we've been working with, trying to win to the Lord, he went, he go to this church. I went there because of him. I want to encourage him. He looked at me, and this is what a man said to me who's just not finding his way. He said, I would have rather heard the word today. How disappointed it was to hear all this mumble jumble about something that don't matter. When somebody should have gained the word. And I'm sitting there, you know, I'm trying to behave, but I wish I could have preached. I wouldn't have preached long, but I'd have said something. I wouldn't have had to scream and holler, but I'd have said something. Everything going down but the word of God. We're trying to conform to the world and win people when really we need to save the soul. Forget win the people. Save the soul. He said, be not conformed to this world. Here's what you do. Change your mind. Change your mind, change your mind, change your mind, change your mind. Change your, your mind. 
The way you think and the way God thinks is totally different. You got to get in alignment with him. Now watch this, because I don't want to make this some long, drawn out thing. He said, you change your mind that you might be able to prove what is good and acceptable, the perfect will of God. Say it with me. We have some proving to do. Yeah, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20, the Bible says you're brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. This is ownership. Believe the king, that the kingdom of darkness is rising ever the more. And if we don't have an army of people who, by the mercies of God, has presented themselves as a sacrifice so that God can use them, we need such an army. We need some prayer warriors. We need some strong people. We need somebody that can quote more than Jesus wept. We need some army. We need some people that can take a stand. We need some young men like Kari to take a stand. We need an army, y'all. We don't need no church going. We don't need no fine dressers. We don't need no glamour. We need an army. Paul said, I beseech you, I beg of you, by the mercy of God, you know it's God's mercy. We have not been consumed because this demonic stuff is on the rise. Amen. He said, the only way you're going to do it is you got to rise up. If we don't have an army to fight, they will take over and push their agenda. And this influx of people from diverse cultures are flooding our country to the point we have foreign people in Congress sitting in judicial benches, many other key seats in our nation, and they gladly oppose everything we stand for out of the Bible. Don't you dare think they want to push God's agenda. All their behavior and their demeanor adamantly opposes any and everything that even suggests itself to be godly. Paul said in 2 Timothy 3.13, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. The decision we make is our likeness. Will it be like the world or like God? Who do you want to be like? What do you want to be like? Your likeness is important. The exhortation is much needed. Don't be like the world. It seems like the church now is getting more and more like the world. We're doing everything the world do. We're setting up a stage now. When do we need all the lights, my sisters and brothers? When do we need all this stuff? We didn't have all that. And we don't need all that. We didn't have entertainment now. You know, I grew up in the church, man. They had a dance floor, man. Them folks danced before the Lord, and my daddy was the ringleader, y'all. He loved to get on the floor and just dance to the Lord. Now we got praise dancers dance for you. Panama. Amen. Man, I tell you, it's, it's different. The danger now is that we're getting so worldly that we're losing spiritually. Our singers are using a lot of slang. This is dope, man. <laughs> now instead of playing, I got a gig. <laughs> this ain't no gig. This worship. Hallelujah. This ain't no gig. Mark, when this get to be a gig, quit playing, son. Amen. I love you. You sound good too. But when it get to be a gig, quit. And go play a real gig. Make some real money. Because this ain't no gig. This is worship. Amen. This is as unto the Lord. Our singers have become now entertainers because we've mimicked the world. And we have our award show just like them. We do everything in a worldly fashion and wonder why we're not coming up with spirit because a mixture won't mix. Come out from among them is what he said. And be separate. Conformity to the world is what they want, and they keep trying. You know, when Lot got to Sodom and Gomorrah, he didn't do like Abraham. Abraham refused to adjust to the culture. The culture had to adjust to him, but Lot said, all right, let's get on in here. Lights, camera, action, make me some money. You know, and even though he would grieve, he got his tent right there toward Sodom. And little did you know, the next thing you know, he's living in Sodom. Why? More and more of the world got more and more relaxed to him. 
the next thing you know, he's sitting at the gate. Y'all know it. He's sitting at the gate. How you get to the gate? You got to do a lot of shutting up to get at the gate. You got to tolerate a lot to get at the gate. Conformity to the world is injurious to the church. This is deadly poison that the church, for the most part, is falling for. The result is a disastrous the church in Asia when John wrote to the church at Laodicea what were they? Lukewarm. How did they get that way? Worldliness. We may try as a Christian to please the world by conforming to it but you do so at the expense of being unfaithful to God. Because the friendship of this world is intimacy against God. Conforming Christians don't want nothing to do with the world. We've come out from the world and we're separate. I don't care what it is. We're separate from the world. I don't need the world's stuff. I got my own. We got our own sound. We got our own distinctiveness. We got our own identity. And you as ladies and you as men. You don't have to stoop to the things the world would project. Formerly to the world is enemy against Christ. Some Christians imagine that they will have more influence on the world by becoming more like it. And this is what people fall for. They say, well, you know, I want to win them. So we get our sound and adjust it to them. I want to win them so we make sure the preaching don't ever offend them. I want to win them. Y'all heard that before. I want to win them. We get you can't 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 catch some fish without no bait. And then our quest to want to win them, we become like them. How come we never find anybody coming to be like Christ, as opposed to the person that's supposed to be like Christ becoming more like worldly like them? I'm watching it happen. I'm watching singers getting led right on out into compromise. I mean, compromise to the point they singing at a bar. Mm, what are we doing, Mike? Singing at a bar. Singing, making ourselves, we saying we getting the word out. But we, we sing a song that don't say nothing about Jesus, Holly. Mm. One preacher said, I don't know if you're talking to your lover or to the Lord. <laughs> We are not to imitate the world. He said in the most plainest way, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. This is where it's at. By the renewing of your mind. It's the renewed mind we need. It's the renewed mind. Your way of thinking needs to be renewed. The way of the sinners think this stuff is funny. You look at it and say, that's not funny. Sure. i never forget one time, uh, uh, many years ago, they had a womanless wedding over there at the Elks Lodge, over there on, on, on Washington Street. Y'all remember the Elks Lodge? I'm talking to some old folks now. They had a womanless wedding, and they had this little boy dressed up as a flower girl, and people thought it was funny. This little boy dressed up like a girl. People thought it was funny. To real believers, that's not funny. That'd never be funny. Transformation. There's a benefit to the renewed mind, and I'm going to get out of here. The benefit, number one, it'll affect your business. You will no longer regard your business dealings from a worldly perspective. This is why you remember there was a couple uh, uh, out west who wanted to uh, uh, wanted these people to make them a cake. And the folks said, I don't want to make you a cake because this is gay marriage. I don't believe in gay marriage. There's somebody down the road who make you a cake, but they wanted to make them mm -hmm. make them a cake. And because they wanted to honor God with their business. Now I'm probably going on record, even though I never talked to these people, didn't know them, but I'm pretty sure they could afford they probably could have used one more sale. You in business, you like sales. Mm -hmm. 
more sales, the more profitable you are. But all money is a good one. Somebody say amen. amen. They said, nah, you go on up somewhere else. I, I can't make you a cake. I'm a Christian. Well, they were fine until they admitted they're Christians they can't make a cake. Because now they want to force them to make a cake. But when you have that renewed mind, that Christian mind, you don't want to do anything that offend God. You want to honor him in your business. So you will no longer regard your business dealings from the worldly perspective, but from the Christian standpoint. And the question will not be merely will it pay, but is it right? That's good, ain't it? Will it pay, but is it right? I don't think it's right to make a cake for two men that's about to get together in something I don't believe in. Number two, it will affect your companionships. Oh, we know about this one, don't we? The question will not be, are they pleasant, but are they pleasing God? Are they helpful to my spiritual life? And some of us have learned to walk this very narrow path by ourselves and be content with it. My circle gets smaller and smaller instead of bigger and bigger. Friendships kind of dwizzle down, and you guess what? I'm okay with it. I'm fine with it. I don't need all these folks. All they want to do is involve you in worldliness. And it, it, isn't it sad you get around people, especially those who name the name of Christ, and then gossip come out of your mouth? Don't that point? You, you just want to use you as a garbage can to put somebody's gossip out. I remember one time I had somebody very close to me start down. I said, why don't we stop right now? Let's just pray for this person. Yeah. Their whole demeanor changed. They didn't want me to bring that up. If you are willing to talk about them, let's pray for them now. You just flooded my ear and burned me with the problem too. Let's pray for them. And you should have heard when they opened their mouth to go to pray. Tragic. It will affect your companionships. It will affect the people that you hang out with. And because you don't want to offend God, there are people you'll walk away from gladly because of the way I think now. Man, you used to be a time, man, I hung out. Man, when I first got saved, man, I wasn't fully made up. I wanted to go around the guys at the bar. I wasn't going to drink. I wasn't going to walk out in the, in, the, in the alleyway and smoke another joint, one of none of that. But you know how bad God made me feel? I can tell you from my own experience, without even talking to anybody, God made me feel so bad and out of place. I walked out of there and said, I'm, I ain't going back. And I've not been back. Amen. It will affect your amusements, the things that you engage in. May I, but ought I. Is there any harm in this? Is there any good in it? David said something in Psalms 51 and 10. He, 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 he was at the epitome of error. And in error, he said, Lord, created me a clean heart. Clean it up. Give me a clean heart. Wipe my slate clean. Oh, God. Now, I told you that letter O is an expression there. There's a lot more said in that O than anything else because he's desperately pulling at the hem of his garment for help. He's desperately pulling just like that woman to get cleansed. He's desperately pulling. Oh God, I need this. Please don't ignore me on this one. Oh God, created me a clean heart, oh God. And renew the right spirit. How did he know it was the wrong one? Because his actions. He knew by his actions that was wrong. Because he didn't have the power. So he needed God to renew. Is there anybody I'm talking to today? We have a duty and an obligation to show forth the praises of him that has brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. And as that song said, walk in that light. Beautiful light. Somewhere the dew drop of mercy shine by. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. I close in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul said, and I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. So you know what that means? 
You got to put your mind embedded in this great book. David, I read it this morning. I mean this afternoon. I hid it in my heart. That's his mind. And I might not sin. That's that reminder. And as you remind yourself what God says, you align your behavior up with it. We got some proving to do. We got to show forth the praises of him that have brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Yes, you're going to hear about somebody eating cats and dogs. They are. They are. The sad thing is the media is so busy because they're so busy trying to prove their hatred for Trump. They don't understand spiritually what's going on. But there's a few of us pastors that did our homework. We knew. I knew when I heard that what was going on because I studied some of this stuff. And a lot of people don't want to deal with spiritual warfare and demonic activity in the earth. But it is just as real as you with your Holy Ghost self dancing up and down this church. They're going to be dancing around their fire. Calling on them gods. And they're going to get some power. They're going to be spitting that blood, drinking that blood, eating the flesh of them animals. They're going to sacrifice babies. There's a woman in the one book I read. She had Satan's baby, she claimed. She got so doped up, she said Satan came in and had sex with her. When I get this stuff out of storage, I'll show it to you. But all this stuff has been going on in America, but now it's at a greater, greater level now because the spiritual influence, demons cannot, they're not universal. They can't be everywhere. They have principalities and wickedness in places, and when they get to an unestablished place, there's a fight for power. So there's a priestess over that city of Ohio that's trying to get the spiritual priestess position. So he's fighting whoever he got to fight to get it. So what sacrifice he going to make? I'll make one you won't make. I'll drink the blood of the animal, cut him, and I'll eat him. That's what's going on. They are eating. And I'm telling you, the best thing can happen is we elect Donald Trump and let him send them all back. We can't afford it. New York is going broke. And the Venezuelan drug uh, 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 gangs are, are, are committing crimes right in broad daylight. A woman got dragged as he was trying to steal her jewelry. These are the people that have come over here. Just a little while ago, in the city of St. Augustine, they grabbed one. That was on the terror watch list. Right here. He's on the terror watch list. Fighting police. Being aggressive. This stuff is on the rise. And they're not really sure where all of them have went. Tell me the need for people who would present themselves a sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. Which is our reasonable service. Just like Paul. I beg of you. Present yourself. A living sacrifice. God don't want no dead sacrifice. You don't want one either. Come on. <laughs> you know, they say man uh, lived his life frivolously and all the way he wanted. And when he got up in age, he decided he wanted to give God his life as a sacrifice to him. But he done already spent all his youth and all his energy in devotion to the enemy, living like he wanted. The Bible said, remember your creator in the days of your youth. God would have used you while you still got energy. Amen. I'm so glad I was serving and working and doing and, and physically asserting myself in the work of the Lord. A younger man working day and night. They told me I was a fool, but I'm glad I was God's fool. You be a fool, be God's fool. Come on, stand. We're going on. Be God's fool. I beg of you. We're small in number, but we're big in heart. Present yourself. A sacrifice, pure and holy. Thank you, Lord. Praise is what I do. Give myself over to you. Well, here we are. What a compelling verse. It was this verse that Martin Luther concluded, and now I have a copy of those 95 theses that he tagged on the wall of the church. Father, his simple desire was to be right with you. And 
he came to the conclusion that the human effort, nothing he could humanly do, could satisfy his yearning to be right with you. He had to lay his all on the altar of sacrifice. And even so must we. So Lord, we give ourselves to you. We ask, Lord, that you would prepare us to be a living sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I will, she will, will be that living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Lord, we are in some critical times, but I thank you in the criticalness of this hour. Your word promised and you said you will pour out your spirit among all flesh. I thank you. There is an outpour and that you are willing to pour it out on all who are willing. So, Lord, we lift up our empty cups to you. Here's my cup. Fill it up and let it overflow. Bless your people. Every need represented here. Oh, God, strengthen. Bless your people. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. We're going home. If you have an offering, bring it on the way. I love you. I pray God's blessings upon you. Man, what a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord. And I don't know about you. Regardless of all that that's going on, God is still on the throne. And I know the spirit, spirit realm, the demonic activity at all time high. Remember the Lord said in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. So those who want can get a fullness of him and we can have something that resists the enemy and resists sin and resists the things of the world as they come at us. I love you. Lord, blessings be upon you. I pray God's blessing go with you over this week. I pray for our children in school. Man, what a time we live in. I pray for our children. Uh, I got a co-worker who 